Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Alberonin here again, and today I'm going to be going over Tamaki in My Hero Ones Justice 2 Remix Edition. And unlike a lot of the characters in this version of the game, Tamaki isn't actually crazy overpowered or crazy stronger or far stronger than he is in the regular version of the game. And um, yeah, but luckily he still has some new things so that there's something I can talk about in this video. And yeah, let's get straight into it. So there are only a few small changes, and one of them is to his quirk 2, and that actually leaves the opponent in like a sliding state, where you can either dash cancel or go for a tilt quirk 1, and that'll cancel the um, the recovery of the quirk 2 into those, which is pretty handy. And also, depending on how close you are to the wall, you can actually just convert off of the tilt quirk 1 meterlessly because you are so close to it, and he doesn't actually have to travel far. And yeah, so that leads to some pretty interesting combos, and it's pretty interesting how he has to like make sure he's paying attention to how close he is to walls and stuff, so that he can get his combos consistently, which uh, I find pretty interesting. There's also some changes to how his wall splats work, and the things that he usually has that wall splat actually don't work anymore, so like his tilt quirk 1, and things like this, and his quirk 1 won't actually wall splat, but he has new things that will wall splat, like his tilt quirk 2 grab, and his um, quirk 2 in the air, so you can just flick them in the wall like that. Also, his, a note on his Quirk 2 also re resets his like combo counter mid-screen, so he can get some combos going like that, and you know, use it to reset and do some more damage from his air part of his combo. So, as yeah, the flick, basically the first hit of the Quirk 2 can just be cancelled into more attack strings, so you know, it lets you get a little bit extra damage that way. So, those are the main changes, I think, and now let's just talk about how they change his combos and how he's going to combo from now on. So, in an example like this, even though I'm not facing, um, pretend I wasn't facing like a wall that can be wall splat, I can actually get wall combos depending on how close I am to the wall. And thanks to the wall being really close, I was able to get that extension off of that. And because the wall is close again, or actually, oh, that didn't work. Usually that works, and this is where it becomes really interesting. Because Tamaki can get these combos off of his quirk too, depending on how close he is from the wall. So I can do this here, and sometimes I'm able actually to do it again, depending on how close I am to this wall. Like that didn't work there, but sometimes it does. I might see if I can get a little bit closer or something. Because it was working before. Okay, I guess we're in the air now. Oh. Uh, let's try that one more time. Okay, and then into this again. If this doesn't work, the main point is that against, like, depending on how wide the map is. See, here we go. And that was a very not optimal combo. You could do that meterlessly and you'd get 12,000 damage. But the point is, depending on how close you are to a wall, you can just keep looping that the attack string into the yellow attack into the quirk 2 until the opponent gets meter blown. And you can just do that meterlessly and get about 12,000 damage. Which I find pretty interesting, because you have to pay attention to what kind of map you're in and see how close the walls are together. Because if they're as close as they um, the walls are in this map, or any closer, you'll be able to get that loop consistently. This one, I think is like a little bit pushing it, because as you saw I dropped the combo a few times. But uh, yeah, it, it works just. So yeah, those are the kind of combos you can do if you're um, near walls. And if you're near a wall that can be wall splat, you can obviously go for things like this, where you just throw the opponent into the wall, and then go in for your wall splat combo. And there you go, you're getting about 12,000 damage meterlessly, just because you realized you're facing a wall. Which isn't stupendous damage in the remix version of the game, but it's pretty decent and it's something that he can get very consistently and the combos aren't crazy hard. And it's cool that he can get that kind of damage even if he's not facing a wall for a wall splat, depending on, you know, as we were talking about before, these weird things with getting combos this way. Which is very inconsistent, and it was consistent before I started recording, so it's probably just Recorder's Curse. But, uh, yeah. And obviously this means that you can also extend combos if you're not being able to get... If you're not being able... If you can't do this consistently, you can also cancel this into Quirk 1, as I mentioned before. 
So you can get combos going this way. Oh my god, that's frustrating how that still whiffs in this version of the game. Like the, the tilt attack into the... Oops. So if you're in an area where you can't get a combo off of this meterlessly, you can... Excuse me. <laughs> Goodness me. Combos are not on my side today. Or the combo gods, I should say. Anyways, if you end that combo slightly better than I did, you get like 11,000 or something for a single dash cancel, which is pretty decent, but I guess I wouldn't recommend that considering he can go for um, that regularly just by going with the tentacles and dash cancelling, and if you do a combo like this... You get the wall, or even if you're not facing the wall, you can get that amount of damage with the dash cancel. Oop, that's frustrating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can do the air attack into the attack string, into this, and depending on how your opponent's facing it, won't whiff sometimes, but it seems like it is whiffing a lot and that's triggering me, so I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically how his combos are going to work. Uh, I'll just try and show this version, the, like, the, where you go back and forwards against the walls, one more time, just to show the meterless damage you can get, because it is pretty impressive. We go for this again, and this again, and then go for something like this maybe, and there we go, you're getting 11,000, maybe you can get a little bit more if you go for like, you know, um, do this extension at the end, and then into the tilt quick one, you get a little bit more damage, but you can see the point, you're going to get 11,000, maybe close to 12,000 if you are in the right position to those to do those kinds of combos. And uh, yeah, that's basically this version of Tamaki. He's really not that overpowered, and his plus ultra 1 and plus ultra 2 all work in the same way. Plus ultra 1 still has the ability to whiff and like act weirdly depending on, you know, where you are near the wall and stuff. But you know, he can still combo into them from his um, tilt quirk 2 to get a decent chunk of damage. And he's also able to combo into them if he does something like this, so he can always combo into them pretty easily. Uh, no, oops. And then from the Tilt Quark 1, I believe he can combo into his Blood Soldiers, right? Yeah. So he can always get damage like that after, if he uses his Tilt Quark 2 in a combo, bring him down to the ground and go for Tilt Quark 1. So, yeah. He can always con hit Confirm into his Blood Soldier 2, which is pretty handy. But other than that, Tamaki's quite a balanced character in this version of the game, which is surprising, because in this version of the game, everyone's kind of overpowered, except for Tamaki. But you know, he's still a pretty awesome character. I think I'm just expecting him to be even better than he is in the regular version of the game, and he's pretty awesome already, so you can't make him much better. But anyways, Tamaki's still pretty fun, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching all the way through. I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye!